Hi, I'm Belinda. Welcome to my studio. Today I want to show you a printmaking method called trace monotype. In this example we're going to use no press. It's just going to be hand transferred and if you don't have drawing skills that's okay because as the name implies we are literally going to trace the elements onto our page. In this example, when the print is dry, I'm going to add pastel to it. This printmaking method has a very unique look to it, but it also has tons of possibilities so that you can take it anywhere you want with pastel, colored pencil, watercolor, acrylic. Like many of the other printmaking methods that I have here on my channel, you'll see that it's wide open. It has lots of opportunities for experimentation and adventure in the studio. So let's have a look. I'm using Akua Intaglio ink in Mars Black. This ink has a tendency to settle a little bit, so stir it very well if you're going to use the same ink for your monotype. My work table is covered with a sheet of clear plexiglass with paper underneath, so I have a nice white surface to roll my ink out on. If you don't have plexiglass, you can use a piece of glass or a piece of acetate. Take your time to roll your ink out thoroughly. Lift the brayer at the end of a roll frequently and let it spin a little bit so that you're making contact with the ink from different start and stop points around the circumference of the rubber. As the ink distributes across the surface you're rolling it on, the sound of it changes from something kind of gloppy and gelatinous to a nice even hiss. The hiss is the sound of evenly sized peaks of ink separating or breaking apart as the brayer rolls away from the ink on the table. That's what you're listening for. No matter how much you keep your ink sealed and airtight, you'll still find little bits and blobs in there. So take time to remove those so that they don't affect your print. You'll notice the rubber tip tool I'm using is actually scraping the ink away to reveal white. You can draw in the ink like this and then just press paper to it and that's a monotype too. Brayers are manufactured with a rest, either the bracket of metal across the back like this one or two little metal feet to keep the rubber off the table. I'm going to do a little test here with just a scrap piece of newsprint to see what kind of textures I'll get with this particular ink with different points. Here I'm using the back of the rubber tool I use, which is the equivalent of the back of a paintbrush. And then fingertips, so soft, fleshy parts of my finger pressing down will give me a different mark making style. And then I'll use a pastel stomp to move around on the paper. It leaves a little bit of a trail because it's already inky and I can see what I'm doing. These three types of marks will be quite varied when we flip the paper over. Since newsprint is smooth and quite thin, it's going to have a dapple of ink stippling all around, which is lovely. And then you can see the different mark making styles I got with finger versus pen point or pencil point versus the pastel stomp. Now if I want to, I can go in and add extra detail or darken an area by just reflipping the paper and pressing some more. I'll do it here on the little face because I can see where I was and you can see what a difference it makes. I recommend doing a little test print with some newsprint as well as a small piece of the paper that you're going to print on just to see what you're going to get before you start. Now I can use a piece of paper that's smaller than the rollout of the ink to get an image that bleeds past the boundary of the paper. But I'd like a margin around my image so I'm going to use scrap printmaking paper and create a little frame to give myself a nice neat square. Be sure that the paper you're going to use is slightly bigger than the frame you've created around the ink and then tape it down to the table. After your margin frame is attached to the table, take your printmaking paper and lay it over the ink centered over the frame. Then use a piece of tape to create a little hinge at the top. In this trace monotype, I'm going to use two different photographs for my reference material. I'm going to mix and match a window backlit in a bathroom with some figures from a dining room at a dinner party. If you're doing this with students, you may want to tape the reference photo down just a little bit, but I'm going to hold it with my hand and with a sharp pencil, I'm just going to trace some of the basic outline of the window. Be careful not to rest your hand too heavily on the reference photo, otherwise you'll get lots of ink on the underside of your print where you might not want it to be. 
You can lift the paper that you're printing on to make sure you've got enough detail there and then move on to a second photograph to add some, in this case, some figures. You can keep your trace work very simple and just collect the basics of the figures or go into lots of detail. And you can add bits and pieces from a dozen different photographs if you want. If you do this project in a classroom, you might have to help students keep their images, their reference photos, centered so that they're not over the frame of the scrap printmaking paper. They want the reference photo to be over the ink. Your students might enjoy drawing themselves inside famous paintings or alongside their favorite superheroes, or maybe inserting themselves into a vintage family photo with people they've heard about but have never met. Tracing elements deliberately out of scale, like the family pet extra large and themselves nice and small could be fun too. The possibilities are pretty endless for fun and engagement with this kind of project. I've got enough detail now in my trace monotype. You can see where my fingertips press down to create all kinds of shadows on the figures in the foreground. And you can see the dappled effect of the ink on paper that has a little bit of tooth on it. Experiment with sample papers that have either a smooth finish, a medium finish, or a rough finish, and you'll see completely different textural lines where it comes in contact with the inks. I'm going to remove just the bottom tape here to pull my frame up and then I'll use the brayer to smooth the drawing lines out of this ink so that it'll be ready for another trace monotype. If you're working in your studio and the ink is drying on the first trace monotype, you can sit and make many more of these. Or if you're in a classroom, you can set up three or four ink stations for students to use in succession. Have fun experimenting with different colored inks, different textured papers, and adding extra media on top of the print or leaving it as is. Trace monotypes are a very old printmaking process and they stand on their own, but they are also perfect underdrawings for adding other media. I've kept the outline of the figures relatively simple here because I knew I was going to paint them. But the mark making of trace monotype is so varied and beautiful, it's definitely worthy of exploration by itself. If you're interested in some beautiful imagery from art history of trace monotypes, do a Google image search for Paul Gauguin and trace monotype. I have another video of a trace monotype in process that will use colored pencil over the watercolor instead of pastel as this one will be. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss that. Adding watercolor to the trace monotype gives me an opportunity to get acquainted with the composition and I decide as I'm going here, you'll see in a moment, that I'm going to add some extra shapes that weren't there. In addition to these darker panels on the right and the left, I've made some extra shapes. This one on the right, without it, it's a little off balance. And this one on the left so that it creates a dark foil behind the figure. Now that the watercolor is dry, I can start using some pastel. You can certainly leave the trace monotype with just the watercolor and be finished. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to put some lighter colored pastel on top of this bold watercolor so that some of the colors show through the pastel and make for lots of different texture and interest in the final piece. Since the pastel is completely opaque, you also have the option of altering your image completely. If you experiment with this method in your studio or in a classroom, I wanna encourage you to be arbitrary with your colors. Be inspired by looking at some impressionistic paintings in history, and then have fun. Give yourself permission to goof off and just play, break some rules, and use colors that you love instead of colors that you think might be realistic to the reference photo that you used in the first place. If you're looking for some examples or inspiration on that, do a Google image search for the term pastel over monotype in quotation marks and you'll find all kinds of beautiful imagery. My color choices are definitely influenced by the reference photo that I used, especially the figures in the room, they were in a red room, but I've been uh, pretty random with my selection of colors around the figures and around the table mostly just paying attention to lights and dark so that I give the impression that these two figures dining together are backlit by that window. 
The paper I'm using here is Arches Cover in white and it is the 250 gram or 92 pound or the lightweight version of the two options that you have at the art supply store. If you get unwanted line work by tracing two different reference photos, you can completely cover them with pastel. But in the next demonstration video, I'll show watercolor and colored pencil uh, to do the same thing, but still leaving a little bit of that dappled look of the trace monotype visible in the finished product. The title of this piece is Between Friends. So that is a trace monotype. If you have any questions about how to make one, you can leave those in the comments below. All of the supplies that I used are also listed below, not in the comments, but in the show more section. This channel also features lots of other printmaking tutorials as well as watercolor tutorials, so have a look around. And if you haven't already, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. I'd appreciate your feedback and give me a thumbs up so I know how this was received. And if you have a friend that's learning printmaking that might benefit from this video, please go ahead and share it with them. Thanks so much for your visit today, and thanks also for all the great feedback that I've been getting on this channel. I really appreciate your comments, suggestions, emails, your thumbs ups, and your subscriptions. I'll see you in the next video. Make something soon. Bye.